Alright guys, let's get on with the water cooling tutorial. Thanks for joining us. Joe here from Jojo Coco Studio. We're going to be talking through a lot of things about water cooling, especially like fittings, pumps and radiators and also like bends as well. Let's get on with it guys. Okay, so we're gonna turn this computer into a water cooling build. So I don't know if you've watched my previous video, you can put it, I mean, you can check it out, the link right here. We've uh, actually built this computer first and then um, I just wanna check out like how it looks like and then we've used like all the really cool parts. For example, the Bits Power Fans, the MSI GeForce RTX Ventus 2080 card and um, the T-Force Delta R RGB RAMs, let's just, um, uh oh so at the moment it looks like that it looks looks very pretty but um, we're gonna make it even more prettier by putting a custom water cooling loop into here so what we're gonna start off is that we're gonna start off with the pump first so in today's market there are two different types of pumps the first one that we're gonna talk about is the DDC pump which looks just like this well actually not really like this because uh, bits power generously gave us a, a heat sink. Other companies, they just give us the bare bones of the DDC pumps. So it's kind of good just getting the Bits Power version because it comes with a, a nice heat sink. But don't worry, I will dismantle this and put a new heat sink onto this DDC pump so that you understand what's going on. So I guess um, one good thing about DDC pumps are like they're, they're very small so that you can include these into like really small compact builds. And um, if you notice that there are two different wires, the first wire is for like uh, connecting towards the, uh, the fan header. And this pump is basically a PWM pump, which means that like it can adjust the speed of the pump according to like uh, the temperatures. For the second cable, which is just, it's just a normal Molex power. You know, actually, technically, you don't really have to watch my video because Bits Power has actually provided us a manual, which is like, which is quite a, kind of straightforward and it's easy to, to understand. But um, if we're if we're lazy, you can watch my video. So what I'm gonna do now is that I am going to uninstall this pump cooler. All right. So that's um, we've taken off the bottom. Remove the top. And there you go. So gently just pull that off. This is actually a, a thermal pad, which we have a new one. So we can replace that. Gently push it out. Yep. There you go. So like I said, it's really tiny. And that's it. That's, that's the DDC pump. Pretty cool, eh? So since we're gonna replace it with a new pump cooler, which is a, a little bit nicer color, obviously subjective to people's taste, but I've chosen the, the black version too, even though it looks like gray, then we'll replace it with this. So that's that, peel that off. All right, that looks good, right? Don't forget to remove the plastic um, cover of this. So if you notice, Carefully, you peel that off. You notice the wires on the left-hand side. Yeah, it should match with the cooler's um, side case. So just put it just like that. And if you notice that, everything just like goes into place. And last but not least, you put this here. Okay, so that's done. So you may be asking, Joe, you know what? I'm not gonna use this what else what other options do we have but before we look at other options just make sure that this o-ring is installed or else like water will be coming out from the sides okay first option is that we can use a mod top which i have one right here this is also by bits power and it's um, a premium mod top a mod top is basically just a cover on top like that okay but it will have uh, many G1 quarter threads. So I just wanna show you quickly that you can actually put it um, whichever way you want. What I mean was like, you can put it like this, this, or this, okay? So let's just quickly screw it in for a sec. Actually, you know what, I'm not gonna screw it, but you got the point, okay? 
So that's that. That is option number one. And then option number two is a DDC top reservoir adapter. So basically, it's a top as well. Like you install it the way how, how you did it, like just then. But what's different is that you can actually screw in a reservoir on top. Okay, let me show you real quick. This is probably one of the most um, popular choices because it's, uh, it's easy to, to install and like configure your loops so that you don't have to have many more fittings. Okay, so as you can see here, it's, it's pretty much identical, but the only big difference is that there's this bit. You see that? Yeah. For this particular version, it's pretty cool because it is a digital RGB. That's why we have a, a cable here, a five volt digital RGB that connects to your five volt motherboard. This is the Water Tank Z Multi 100. And let's just quickly unbox this. So this is the 100 mil reservoir version. It's very cute, it's very small. So what I'm gonna do now is that I am going to put this here, obviously, can't put it here yet because we have to unscrew this bit. And actually, you know what? Since it comes with a anti-cyclone, which is uh, very good for like not having cyclone in the reservoir, do install it here. And there you go. This is a pump res combo. Obviously, we have to screw that in. And we're good to go. Okay, so the second option in the market for a pump is a D5 pump. So this is the actual bare bones of the D5 pumps. And um, I actually uh, included this like, you know, assembly in my previous video. So you can check out this video here. So that's it. I mean, there's um, two different types of pumps that you can check out in the market right now. So these are the mainstream one. But then I wanna go through a little bit further. There's actually something really cool that I wanna show you guys today. This is the Bits Power Touch Aqua Sedna. Now, it's a little bit different because it's a distribution water block built in with a pump. I'll tell you what, if you want something like totally different to like anybody else, you should really check out this cool product. Obviously, it's only specifically for the O11 Dynamic case. I think this pump is not a DDC pump. This is a SP1 pump. And to be honest, I've never used this before, but it's pre-built in. But like, it seems that like the size of the, the screws and all that is identical to the DDC. So we could technically, I think, technically replace this with a DDC if you really want to. So as you can see right here, if we just like um, briefly install it. So we can briefly install it onto the case, something like this. So it seems that it's like it's a really easy mounting process and let's just talk about a little bit more about it. So as you can see here, the pump is located on the left hand side there. Then we have like many G1 quarter threads. So that's one here, 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 and here. So the whole purpose of this is that you can actually route your, your tubes to the graphics card and maybe this one to the CPU cooler and maybe just like a few more that you have some options. So maybe you have like for the RAMs as well. And I'm assuming that this top one is for the, the fill port, okay? So it looks very, very straightforward, but like um, there's a lot to play around with because uh, you have plenty of G1 quarter threads. Obviously you don't have to use all of them so that uh, you can actually block them out with like a, a stop fitting or so. It actually comes with a cover as well, but I personally, I don't really like it, uh, but of course it's up to your taste. So what it is, is just like a shiny, shiny reflective material that you can install. Hello there. Start right there. What do you guys think? With or without? You know what? Actually, I take that back. It's it's kind of cool. The reason why I think it's cool is that, okay, once you turn the computer on, you actually see like the lights coming through and stuff. But when you turn it off, it just becomes like a mirror finish. I think I think that's kind of neat, actually. All right, so fittings, extenders, rotaries, multi ports, valves. And um, as you can see right here, Bits Power provides us many different colors. One of them is black, a standard black, which is um, quite a lot of people use this, or the other is uh, silver. But this particular version is actually a black sparkle silver. So technically it's not that silver, but I'm not sure if you can catch this on, on the camera. Let's start off with the fittings first. 
Um, the fittings is like, uh, I believe there's like three different sizes of um, the outer diameter of the fitting. So what that means is that um, you will be choosing the thickness of the tubes. So this particular fitting is for 14 outer diameter, which we will use a tube that is 14 outer diameter. And um, I personally like this size because it's not too thick, it's not too thin, and it's just it's just about right for me. But of course, in like many different scenarios, if you want to have like a massive build, you may want to use a 16 diameter. But um, if you have like a smaller build, you may want to you know have like a a really narrow tube that uses 12. But I believe that uh, for this particular build that we have right here, I think the 14 outer that outer diameter is pretty good. So what exactly is inside the fitting? So this is um, standard fitting by Bits Power. And it's just basically a cap on top and then it comes with a, a loose o-ring which you'll have to install it in a bit and then another o-ring inside so it's really straightforward all you have to do is that um, put in the fitting actually no wait you're, just, you're supposed to put this in first and don't forget to shave off this bit actually uh, we have to use a chamfer and then once we have that the edges smooth then we can actually put in the 14 outer diameter tube into a 14 outer diameter fitting and then just shove it in just like that. Okay, and you can actually see it inside if it reaches to the very end. Okay, so once that's done, you just put it down and then you just tighten it on the top. Rotaries and extenders. So these are super important because I remember at first when I started water cooling, I thought you don't need this, but you really need these, especially this one. Um, actually, it depends on your build, but like I, I normally use these quite a lot, 90, 90 degree rotary turns. So basically what this is, is just an extender that can route your water cooling path at a really tight 90 degree turn. As you can see here, this is just like a one quick example there. And then this could connect to your radiator and then it can go like a really tight 90 degree. It's impossible to bend a tube that looks like this. Other things that are very useful at some times are these extenders. So these extenders are, you know, self-explanatory. They just extend. And sometimes you do need this because you might have like a, a space where you, you could use a tube, but like the tube is like way too small for like two fittings. So it just doesn't make sense. That's why these extenders come into to handy. If you notice that some rotaries and extensions, they come with a different uh, configuration. So this one is uh, male and male, but the one that we just saw was female to male, right? So watch out what you're gonna buy. And and also there are some like really little, like um, small features that you can actually turn it as well. Oh, this one's very stiff. But yeah, you can actually turn it so that you can have some flexibility in your build. Then we have the valve. So the whole purpose of valves are like to discharge the water from the loop and you just have to make sure that uh, you know what you're buying because the one I got was uh, a male to a female. And what I normally use with the valve is with a multi-port. So this can actually connect to like um, many different uh, paths of the, the water cooling loop. So for example, uh, maybe, a, maybe water is coming in here and it goes out here. But then the, we have an option to drain the water out here. One last thing about these fittings, extenders, rotaries is that all that you see here, they're all G one quarter threads. So I guess in the industry standard right now, as of today, um, all the threads here are G one quarter sizes. But um, I have to be honest with you, I've seen like other sizes on Bits Power website. So you just have to make note that whatever you buy all the threads are the same so that everything is 
compatible with each other. Moving on to the graphics card, today we're going to be putting a water block onto this MSI Ventus RTX 2080. Now installing a water block onto a graphics card is quite straightforward. There's not much um, to explain, so I'm just going to quickly go through this. So obviously we're going to be using a Bits Power water block. Now for some reason, if you want to maintain or if you want to keep the heat sink, just in case if you want to, you know, change your water block to back to the normal fans, when you remove the back plate, just be careful of the wires connecting to the PCB. Before we start the water cooling montage, I want to introduce you to two really cool products. The first one is the graphics card holder by Indie Laser. Now, Indie Laser, he's a friend of mine, he's a modder as well. He makes graphics card holder and he sells through his Facebook. So what you do is that you just give him like some kind of a text or maybe a logo or maybe whatever you want to say on your graphics card holder and you can actually customize and he will laser cut it over here. So it looks pretty neat, right? On the right hand side here, you can have like the ability to adjust the, the graphics card holder as well. And um, at the back of the graphics card holder, there's an extra flare to it because there's a digital RGB 5 volt LED strip at the back, which is going to look really damn cool. So while we're at it, because we want to add the extra flare to your rig, you need some really cool looking RAMs. These RAMs are T-Force Delta R RGB by Team Group. Now T-Force is basically a gaming lineup that they have and most of their products are pretty much RGB. So this is just one of them. This is the Delta R RGB. They also make some really cool SSDs, which comes with a digital RGB on top as well. So that's must be like kind of crazy, right? But crazy good. You know what? Let's just start the montage, guys. 